So some years ago, there was an article I read. It was about the guitar player Chet Atkins. I'm sure a few of the folks here in the audience know who Chet Atkins is. And uh, the guy who wrote the article started off talking about bumblebees. Turns out there was this, uh, this uh, scientific study done by a group of engineers. And these group, this group of engineers determined that the bumblebees, the length of the bumblebees wings were not enough to sustain flight. But nobody told the bee. So, uh, the, there we go. The, 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 the purpose of the author of this article starting that way was he said, you know, there were things Chet Atkins could do on a guitar that no human being should be able to do, but nobody told Chet. So, I don't play guitar like Chet Atkins. I, I wish I did, you know. But, but I can write a song about bumblebees. Yeah. Kind of. Every day I wake up to say I got another chance to make it. All day long I'm singing that song just to give me the strength to take it. But the boss comes around looking all hearts and pops. Says he's sorry, but he's gonna cut my hours. Milk's gone up and the baby's got the flu. And all the time I wonder just what I'm gonna do. You say Bumblebee's wings are built too short and she shouldn't be able to fly. I think about that when I look at my pay. How the hell am I supposed to get by? How the hell am I supposed to get by? Buzz it out an hour each way to my travels. Another of the kids starts coughing and a hacking, and my week begins to unravel. My mom tries to help, but she's only getting older. She's got diabetes and arthritis in her shoulder. My nose to the grindstone trying to make do, and all the time I worry that I got a sniffle too. They say Bumblebee's wings are little too short, and she shouldn't be able to fly. Think about that when I look at my pay. How the hell am I supposed to get by? Save the Last Dance for Me. And uh, um, uh, I, I come from Colorado, and, and over the last year or so, I, I was in the habit of uh, walking around this lake that was near my house. Uh, it's called a place called uh, Lake Arbor, walking with my dog, Rufus. And one day, Rufus and I were walking around the lake, and I wanted to write a song sort of in the spirit of Doc Thomas, you know, without blatantly ripping him off, you know. so. And uh, we're walking along, Rufus and I, and suddenly the, the idea struck me, and I, I got something. And uh, I actually, I've got two new albums that I just came out with this summer, and uh, on one of the one of the albums, uh, about three or four of the songs there came from walking around the lake with Rufus. And and one of my friends said, uh, "You better hope that Doc doesn't ask for a share in the royalties. You know? He's he's content with biscuits for now." But anyway, so this is a 
song in the spirit of Doc Palm. It's called Darla. Darling, pick out a pretty dress. It's the first Monday of the week. Too many of our friends live to work. Distraction is what I see. Surrender our night to chance Darling, put on that pretty dress Tonight's a night for us to dance Oh, darling, let your hair down With the moon and stars swimming your eyes City sounds are just an invitation in disguise. Feel the beat pulsing on the street. There's a song in a stray cat's meow. Darling, let your hair down. The time for us to dance is now. who uh, signed me up uh, for, for tonight's show. I said, we, uh, my wife and I, we sold our house in Colorado. We bought an RV. We put Rufus the dog and the three cats in the RV, and here we are. And Mr. Agronoff um, saw on the phone and says, you drank the Kool-Aid, didn't you? <laughs> but when I first moved to Denver, um, when I first moved to Denver, I, for a little brief spell, I was in this country and western band. And this, this band had some very particular conditions under which we had to play. We had a keyboard player. Uh, well, he's not here now. But we had a keyboard player who would be on the far right of the stage. And he always had to be on the far right because his right eye was blind. So the only way he could see the rest of the band was you know, to be over there. Now, meanwhile, the bass player had to be on the far left because his left eye was a glass eye. And I swear I'm not making this up. I couldn't make this up if I now, meanwhile, I had this buddy of mine who could play any instrument, anything with strings and frets, you know. But it didn't matter where you put him because he had cataracts as a child. And, and, and so he had, after a series of operations, he could see through these pop bottle thick glasses, but he had like no peripheral vision. He was like considered 
legally blind, you know? And the band was fronted by this very bold, bodacious, blonde woman named June. And one day I turned to June and I said, it's June, clearly this band is a case of the blonde leading the blind. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and uh, my buddy Ernie, the, uh, the guy with the top bottle of thick glasses, he uh, says, you know, if you're going to make a pun that bad, you better at least justify it with a song. So uh, that's as much connection as that band has to this song. <laughs> But uh, here we go. You didn't see anything behind the wicked gleam in her eyes. You didn't see that the sway of her hips was meant to hypnotize. You didn't see that she was troubled from her head down to her toes. You didn't see anything that she needed to need. You didn't see the pale circle on her finger where there'd been a ring. In fact, looking back, you could say he didn't see a thing. He didn't see any trouble or any of the warning signs. I guess you could say there was another classic case of the blind. Smoke. You can blame it on the neon lights and there were one or two broke. You can blame it on the crowd, there were people that from wall to wall. You can blame it on the stage life and made it hard to see it all. You can blame it on the shifting shadows of the dance room floor. But when you saw her move and you could see a thing no more.